Hey there guys, Bowen Hamster here, and um, we're going to be taking a look at Steel today. If you do find this guide and build helpful, then please chuck us a like and send us a subscribe. And if you think this would help anyone, then share it with them as well, please guys. Okay, but let's take a look at Steel, shall we? His background. Understands the concept of mercy, just not as it applies to him. First memory is the bay doors opening on a... On icy orbit? Okay. Um, through, though many follow, denies being a leader. Okay. Um, this guy is the number one support at the moment. Uh, his ability to stun for three seconds with a combination of his ability to mitigate auto attack damage f by 90% as well. Um, and to protect his teammates with a massive shield that also slows people just makes him th the best at the moment. Um, so let's take a look at these abilities, shall we? So he's got his punch, he does 58 basic damage. Okay, uh, that's just his basic attack, guys. Uh, Bulwark. This is insane, guys, okay? Um, if you harass the opponents enough that you you make yourself such a nuisance that everyone wants to attack you that is fantastic because all that happens is as soon as everyone attacks you you pop this okay and you reduce 90 percent of all incoming damage not from aoe abilities okay so things like um bellica's bellica's grenade it's not going to stop that but it will stop adc damage it will stop howitzer's rocket it will stop all the things that are single target damage, such as that. Um, so this is a really, really good spell to level up first. Uh, the only thing that you've got to be aware of is that once you pop this, you can't turn. So you've got to make sure that you are facing where you want to be mitigating all the damage. Okay? Bull Rush. This is this is good, guys. This is a, a knockback. It knocks them up for a second, um, and it deals ability damage to it. Now you've got to be aware with Bull Rush that the higher you level, level it, the more damage it does. Yes. However, the more mana it costs to use. Um, 65 is the first level, and 70, 75, and then 80. Um, so at maximum level, although it does extra damage, you're still getting the same uh, stun duration. Um, but it but it costs uh, an extra 15, 15 mana. Okay, um, if you're not worried about mana, then you can you can level this quite quite well. I usually leave this until last uh, to level up maximum, um, just generally because the 90% mitigation. Um, and the cooldown that you gain from the force shield is is just so much better. Force shield, you chuck up a massive barrier that anything that moves through gets slowed, um, and nothing can penetrate it uh, apart from Murdoch's ultimate. Uh, so the the levels uh, reduce the cooldown. Starts off at 24 seconds, then goes down to 20, 16, and 12. Now, this also increases the mana cost from 100, 120, 140, and 160. Um, so this is usually the second thing that I upgrade. I just kind of lower that cooldown a little bit. Um, so I usually go get my Bull Rush level 1, then the Bulwark or Force Shield, depending on what I feel that I need during uh, the laning stage, and then whichever one I haven't chosen I go for, then I max up Bulwark first, Force Shield, and then Bull Rush, and then Shield Slam when it's available. Now, the Shield Slam. Shield Slam, guys. Um, this applies a two-second stun when you hit with them, okay? This is really good to combo with Gideon's ultimate. This is really good to... Uh, combo with howitzer's ultimate um basically this is just insane uh, you can combo your shield slam with your bull rush to get a grand total of three seconds stun 
on anyone that you want to take down. Uh, I like to use this on ADCs uh, along with the bull rush because for the three seconds you just nuke them down. Okay. Um, the damage scaling for this is 1.2. So that means for every one power that you get, uh, you're going to get 1.2 extra damage to your your shield slam there. Um, now maxing this up to maximum reduces the cooldown to just 70 seconds. So you're going to be bashing these out once a minute almost. Um, and at maximum level it does 470 ability damage. Um, plus obviously 1.2 scaling of all the other damage that you've got. Uh, the scaling for Bull Rush, if anyone's interested, is 0.8. So uh, for every one damage you put on your character, you're going to get 0.8 damage to the Bulwark. So it's not as effective. Um, Steel isn't really kind of a damage hero. Uh, he's more of a CC for me uh, and a tank. So let's let's go over how I build him, and let us take a look at my steel tank build. So, all the prime cards that we got, we're going to go for the Centurion, uh, just to give us that extra 500 health, enabling us to stay in the fights for longer. This also gives minions an extra 500 health, making them really hard to kill. Uh, most most of your teammates will be going for either the Archmagus or the Warlord so having that Centurion there kind of really complements uh, those two. So we've got a Scout Ward, a Healer Token, a Circlet of Health, we've got Elder Major Amulet um, with a 3 point health, a 2 point power token and a 1 point power token in it. We've got Elder Major Amulet here with a 3 point health a two point power token and a one point power token. Another Elder Mage Amulet here with a three point health, a two point power token, and a one point power token. A Genesis Torch with three one point barrier upgrades. We've got a Lantern of Spring with three three point basic shield upgrades. We've got a Lantern of Spring here with three one-point um, basic armor upgrades there. We've got a Sage's Ward here with a three-point health, a two-point power token, and a one-point power token. And we've got three Tune Barriers here with uh, three three-point uh, energy barriers in it. And just in case, we've got Honor the Pure uh, with three lesser healths in there, um, three one-point health uh, tokens in there. Uh, this is not as viable on steel anymore on the pure. They have changed it. Uh, it now costs a hundred mana in order to activate. Beforehand it didn't cost anything to activate. It was just there and you could use it on cooldown. Um, but now it costs a hundred mana to use this. Uh, so generally I don't use this in my build so much anymore. Okay, So what I do is I start off with my Scout's Ward and my Healer Token. Uh, Scout Ward to keep vision so that you can see if the ADC is getting ganked. Uh, after that I then generally get rid of these because I uh, move into a Circlet of Health and my Sage's Ward. Um, obviously the Sage's Ward having the ability to go invisible so you can see anyone who is invisible. Uh, I then want to move it into Genesis Torch and the Lantern of the Spring. Now I get these at the, the next three points each, uh, just generally for the extra mana regeneration that you get there. Um, this is really going to enable you to um, uh, to deal out more ability damage when you are doing this. Um, you then want to max out your Genesis Torch first, uh, unless you are taking a lot of basic damage. You're probably not in the offlane. Um, 
in which case you then uh, would level this up first but you're going to do that secondary from then on you just basically decide do you need more health do you need more armor if you need more armor to mitigate damage then you've got your tune barrier here or you got a lantern of the spring if you want more health then you go into your elder mage amulets right here um, but basically your end build is going to be your three to elder mage amulets your lantern of the spring sages ward and your tuned barrier okay um, and that is how I build my steel. There is some gameplay guys uh, so go take a look at the gameplay on how I work. Uh, what you want to be doing is you want to be making sure you are stunning those high priority targets and make sure that you are uh, able to uh, kite and peel off enemy heroes as well as just mitigate as much damage as possible guys. So we'll just go over this one last time. We've got a Centurion as your prime scouts ward healer token circlet of health elder mage amulet with a three point health two, uh, two point power one point power we've got elder mage amulet again with three point health two point power and one point power and we've got elder mage amulet here with three point health two point power and one point power genesis torch with three uh, one point barrier tokens we've got lantern of spring here with three um, three point basic armor tokens We've got Lantern of the Spring here with three one point basic tokens, basic, basic armor tokens. Sage's Ward with a three three point health, a two point strike, and a one point strike. Uh, we've got a Troom Barrier here with three three point barrier tokens. And Honor the Pure with three one-point health tokens there, guys. Okay, well, uh, let me know if that's helped, guys. Uh, if there's any particular builds that you want to be seeing, then let me know in the comments below. Uh, other than that, like, favorite, subscribe, uh, share with all your friends, and I'll see you soon. Take care, guys.